I'm Britt McLean. And I'm Peter O'Grady. And we are your tour guys through the next two hours of Queer Quazy Mayhem. That's right. Up next on our right, we have Squeal. If you look closely, you'll see the lovely yet mischievous Tabitha Turlington hosting. So be warned. Uh, watch mm. out. Anyway, but, but apart from that, apart from the usual blend of gossip and news and reviews, we also take a look at the lost footage from the Johnny Big Brother Cass interview from a few weeks ago. Remember, it all went black. Mm. Uh, so we've got that back. And we also check out the latest DT's Bake Off um, action. That's right. Strap yourselves in and away we go. 31 wishes to advise viewers that our next program is classified MA and contains adult themes, drug references, Sexual references, medium level coarse language, nudity, repeating, our next program is classified for mature audiences. This program is proudly brought to you by the Peel Dance Bar, corner of Peel and Wellington Streets, Collingwood. Welcome to Bank TV Squeal on Channel 31, your community television station. Now, of course, tonight we have got a huge show for you in huge colours. We're very bright tonight. We've got every colour of the rainbow, oh. as homosexuals are. Every colour, every shape and every size. And our panel now will show that. That's right. Yeah. On the end, we've got the lovely Peter. Hello. Hey. <laughs> Peter, 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 Peter. How have you been, Peter? I've been good. I've been very good. Busy but good. I'm feeling good today. Just what have you been doing? Out. Working. Lots of work and homework. But hey. Are you studying? Yeah. What? Childcare. And yeah, next we'll yeah. move right up. No, that's all right. That's good yeah. if someone looks after the little kitties. Yeah, no one else will. Are they, they hard? Are they hard work? They are. I swear to God, no, I swear. I, and, and every day I leave with snot all over me. <laughs> I have to sit on a tram. Uh, yeah. I have to sit on a tram and people just go... No, it's because when you so visit your sisters and your brothers and stuff, you can just, like, pass them back. Yeah. Oh, I but pass them back at the end of the day. No, but you've got to, like, what? Nappies and stuff. Oh, I am the nappy king. Hey, yuck. Yuck, yuck, yuck. <laughs> Amy, <laughs> Amy, 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 how have you been? Make Amy welcome. Yay! The Amy stuff. I've been very well, thank you. You've been out filming with Peter, and we'll yes. see that a little bit later on in the show. I what have. else have you been doing? Um, working. Same sort of thing. What do you yeah. do? <laughs> Like all struggling actors, I'm a waitress. <laughs> oh, we're going to get into acting. Uh, if yeah. there's anybody out there, <laughs> Where's your please shot? don't take anything you see today <laughs> as like material you want to use for Ames, because she actually apparently is quite good <laughs> in the casting couch. <laughs> it's just when she gets in front of the camera, things slide. But good <laughs> luck on all those openings, Ames. Uh, yeah. I've heard you got a... Anyway. Man, uh, Troy on the end. Meg Troy, welcome. Yay! Here's our John Michael Hausen. <laughs> Well, okay. they, well, you're the new one. Well, because you're entertainment reporter. You're, uh, Angela Bishop, what would you prefer? Oh, Angela Bishop. Yeah. All right, yeah. it's Troy Bishop. Troy Bishop. <laughs> Mum's Bronnie. Yeah, oh. Okay. Now, you oh. must be excited. Kylie's doing everything at the moment. Oh, my God. What isn't she doing? It's fantastic. Let's start off with you. Let's all start. right. Well, first of all, we've got the new song, which I saw the film clip on the weekend. <laughs> Sexy. And that's coming from a gay boy. And you can see the, um, the titty so, yeah. bombas too. You can. And it's like so much more revealing and more sexy than the little 
um, gold hot pants she wore and spinning around. But at no. the same time, it's stylish. It's not. Sl- it is. It's not Sabrina I'm... Boys, 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 Boobies falling out slushy. No, no. I reckon it's time. one of my favourite films she's nice. done. And she's, you know, she does the uh, revisit Charlene days. She does. At the end of it's it. It's a softer sort of, Charlene, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, and a bit shorter. Well, but it, it couldn't be much harsher. But um, on that, <laughs> we, we've got a new album <laughs> coming out, which should be October the 1st. And as part of the launch, um, Gay Nightclub in London have asked her if she wanted to come and, you know, um, do the single Can't Get You Out of My Head. And she's actually turned it down. Um, the Chicago do that. So they've actually got Victoria Beckham, who's also oh. releasing her new song. Posh Spice. Um, Drag fight. Such an inno- Not Such an Innocent Girl on the same day. Oh, and But, I mean, his comments was that, you know, he's always open to have Kylie there, but he's going to support anyone that will support the, you know, gay community. And, I mean, like, I think in... In London will be hard because they do love Victoria over there. I mean, well, she's the new Princess Australia, Australia, now, yeah. Deb. In Australia, well. she's going to go number one hands down over Victoria Beckham. That's not an issue. Over there will be a tough battle. We have the English charts. It's funny though because they they, they peak at number one, then they can mm, spoil it like yeah. that. Like, but very fickle. It's huge to you, you want to be number one over there. They all want to start off at number one. Well, Jerry and all that. They put yeah, so much effort into like, being number one. If you debut at like, like, like number eight, it's seen as failing. It's crap because mm. then you just fall yeah. straight up. I'd but just for an album releases eight. as well. Yes. Another album release October twenty nine will be Madonna's new compilation. Oh. What's it going to be called? Another compilation by Madonna. <laughs> Sorry. It's going to be called What It Feels <laughs> Like in a loving way. to Be A Star. Anyway, thanks for Moving right along, Peter. <laughs> See you, goodbye. No, and you yeah, know, Whitney right. Houston's right. actually just signed that massive deal. <laughs> Whitney signed a deal for like $160 million or something. She's got to do six albums and two greatest hits because I love Whitney too. <laughs> well, see, I'm I actually... Music. This is a, shows how sort of sad I can be. Like, I actually have never liked Whitney because... You know that song... So she no, slagged off Madonna years and years and years no, ago? No, no, it was that song that's like, I want to dance somebody or something. Yeah. That beat Madonna for an award, and that just turned me against her, like, back in the oh, 80s or whatever. Oh, no, I, lo- I loved her. I just, no, but I haven't been able to get that vision out of my head, and I just haven't been able to appreciate it. Oh, I love her. Amy. Yeah, darling. darling. Okay, um, everyone would have heard about this, the biggest drug bust in Victoria. So far, they see Ferraris and beachfront houses. And... So we're going to live now, darling. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. But, uh, that struggling actor thing is going to go. Yeah. The, um, the cops have warned now that... There's going to be some fake ecstasy around. Not that we're condoning drug use or no, anything, but all. you know you've got to be aware of that. I guess. Oh, let's face it's in the streets faking. every day. There's loons walking around banging into walls. Oh yeah. God! I mean, I don't. There'll I mean, be some rat poison out in the market. Be careful. No, I just don't, you know, in my personal opinion, surely the police hold it and seize it, and then surely there are the odd one or two that you know. Yeah, well, we won't I go imagine. there. Um, <laughs> let's not. My personal opinion does not. Well, I would hate to be you in the next couple of weeks, if you. <laughs> 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 yeah. Oh yes, and uh, also I just wanted to mention. I'm sure everyone's heard about it as well. That um, Libby Gore, uh, Toddy Goldsmith, and I like Toddy. Fi- and Fiona Horn are going to be doing the Vagina Monologues. Oh my God! And uh, it's a play that's been incredibly successful overseas in America, Should and uh, heaps of famous people have done it. Uh, Whoopi I, Goldberg, Oprah they, Winfrey. I think they do it to get credibility, some of them now. Like, oh, Mickey from Young and the Restless mm-hmm. is doing it. And I think yeah. it's such stars from England, like EastEnders and stuff, to do it in England. Look, I, think I, it can do, I, can do a, I can do one now. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> add more to my credibility. No. Do you want to do yours too? Tap the no thanks. <laughs> oh! Okay, okay, not, not that sort of a vagina monologue. <laughs> but, but, um, we can all do a vagina monologue. Yeah, yeah, yeah so do. So it was hugely successful in America, and I suggest we make it hugely successful here. And, Why don't you um, do it? Well, I have done it. <laughs> I have done a piece from You're the Vagina Monologues. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, I've done a piece from the Vagina Monologues, and hopefully that will be coming up soon. But. Well, one day I'd like to see your piece of Vagina. <laughs> <laughs> now, let's pass over to Poyda. Okay, to Poyda. Oh, yeah. I've just got this article that shows that why most men are still emotionally retarded. Some, most... I say, I don't work with kids. I know this. Um, the Victorian, uh, uh, Victorian army major was cleared um, of 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 being cruel and horrible after he he- ordered a pillowcase to be held over the head of a lieutenant. Not only was the pillowcase held over the the head, um, they threatened to put ants down his shirt, then put something down his shirt and said, "They're ants. Are they oh. biting?" And they left him out in the sun for like hours and hours on end, playing <laughs> horrible, loud, you know, Shocking rock it, music. It? And they got off saying, "Oh no, that's okay. That's you know." Fair enough, simulated tra- training. They it's all like do that sort of thing in the army. They know it. And it's they bad. wonder why we don't want to join. Exactly. And it's bastardisation. I don't care what you call it. It's wrong. That's just my opinion. <laughs> and that's all from Peter for the yeah. time being. Now, boys and girls, one and all, she is 
an absolute beauty. Please. And if you've got the gay papers, please check out because she's looking very saucy in the social yeah. scene. The lovely Sally on the news desk. Thanks, Sally. Thank you, Tabitha. Well, a, a big news in the last few days is that a three-way tug of war, almost like a triple threat match in wrestling, has broken out and has unexpectedly put GLBT issues high on the agenda for the forthcoming federal election. It follows John, Prime Minister John Howard's comments that he doesn't believe in gay marriage, which he made to a packed auditorium of students in a radio interview. He said we should com be completely tolerant and fair-minded about people's sexual preferences but I don't believe homosexual relationships should be given the same place in our society such as traditional concepts of marriage. Opposition leader Kim Beasley said that um, the same-sex couples should be recognised under laws that, which applied to heterosexual couples. I reckon it's a reasonable thing that all the normal laws that apply to the operation of couples for things like their superannuation to give them recognition. The Australian Democrats, however, have called on Kim Beasley to make good in his belief by legally recognising the, uh, the same-sex couples by supporting the Democrats' sexuality discrimination bill. It, um, Brian Greig, Senator for GLBT Issues for the Democrats, said it is hypocritical of Mr Beasley to flag Labor's support for equal treatment of same-sex couples when his party has voted against every same-sex couple amendment moved by the Democrats since 1996. He said Labor can't have it both ways, like Super North in the 70s perhaps, and can't promote equality for same-sex couples while at the same time voting for all attempts to achieve this. Meanwhile, Tasmanian gay and lesbian rights um, spoke, group spokesperson Rodney Croom said that Mr Howard's opposition to gay marriage was a red herring, but um, called for more detail on Mr Beasley's policies. The question is, will we get more than we got in 1998, according to this advertisement from the then brother-sister newspaper? And in other brief news around the world, there is this week an international gay and lesbian um, world conference in Oakland, California, with many, many groups going through from October the 24th to September the 3rd. Back to Tabitha, the Chief Squealer. Oh, thank you, Sally, and you're looking lovely today, sweetheart. Now, Troy, you've got something brief to say? Yeah, I was, were you ever a Boy George fan? Did you ever dress up like Boy uh, George? I wanted to come a come a come a come here. Because <laughs> you know what? He's uh, written a, a play and he's doing all about himself. And they're yeah. actually doing auditions in London now, so if you, wanna, if you think you've got what it takes to be a young Boy George, Fly to London on an audition. It'd be great to do. But, I mean, I why would you? I mean, actually, you can what? see with him writing a whole play about himself. Have you? And he gives some lame excuse about, oh, it's, you know, it's a message that, you know, oh, yeah. getting out to people. So it's like, yeah, bullshit. You just want to publicize yourself. <laughs> you got nothing money. else to <laughs> about it. No, none of the singles are working. <laughs> well, exactly. Anymore. But his book's really good. Have you read the autobiography? No, yeah, that really fantastic. Don't you I can watch if they do it as like a, as a, like a mini movie. series. Yeah. <laughs> I love a telly movie, oh, but, no. but reading it to takes too much effort. I must admit, yeah. as a kid, though, I was a college club friend. I loved them. Oh, I adore yeah, them. Yeah, I'll tumble for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes. Oh no. <laughs> We've got oh, this oh. picture here, and we don't know is that Vanessa Morosi or is it actually Dawn French losing <laughs> losing a lot of weight? I really can't make up my mind, but Emma Bunton does look sensational. We're going to go to a nice. quick break now. When we get back from the break, we have got some amazing footage with these two beautiful, beautiful oh, young yeah. squirrels went on. out and filmed without any training whatsoever. Well, they've had a little bit, but they've just forgotten because they're a little bit drunk every now and then. Right, but I'm now. Focused. Sorry? We're professionals. <laughs> we know what we're doing. Yep, girly, that's right. So until then, grab something really, really pretty, play with it, pull it, poke it, and we'll see you very shortly back here at Square. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Beat 
watch. And week to week, we'll be coming back with all the best locations for beef. <laughs> also, if you've got any questions on computers and things like that, write them in and Monique will be happy to answer them. Or anything political you just don't understand, you can either harass Sally at any venue or you can write in and she'll help your questions out from the news desk. Now, something very exciting happened. Of course, the Pride mm. March is gearing up, so we need lots and lots of money. These two lovely little squalettas went off on their merry we way. Did. To actually, you can explain it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay. We went to the CT's Cake Bake Off and filmed lots of stuff. Mm -hmm. It was huge. It was a very big day. It was great, it was and it uh, raised money for Pride March to buy important things like portaloos and uh, to stop That's traffic important. and things like that, and trams. Yes, that was very... No, 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 to stop trams. It costs uh -huh. a lot of money to stop a tram going down the street so we why can march down in the middle of why it. Why can't they just stop the bloody things? Uh, well, all right. Oh, <laughs> Jane, it's stop it. But anyway, um, enough of us talking. Maybe we should show the footage of it. Yeah. Yeah. You we see enough it. of it, I guess. Yeah. yeah. We were there. Talking. Watch that camera work. <laughs> <laughs> watch that camera work. Come on, watch it. Watch it. <laughs> we're here at the DT's annual Cake Bake Off, which is raising money for the Pride March for next year. Um, we're going to go and check out some of the cakes, some of the creations, some of the masterpieces that will unfortunately all end up in our tummies. But it's all for a good cause and some people obviously love making the cakes. And let me tell you, there are some good ones out there. Let's go have a look now. I'm here with the four big kahunas of the day. The ones that are going to decide or make or break these cooking delights. The judges, how are you all? Very well, Very thank well. you. Fantastic. Thank you. Well, that's good. Hungry, oh my God, that's a good sign. Now can I ask, what are you looking for? What are the special things you're looking for in these cakes? Well, bribes. <laughs> bribes. Anything, any sort of bribes? Bribes. <laughs> um, I think a cake that has really good composition, colour, texture and um, something that's a bit on the edge. Oh, she's obviously the technical judge. Now, who's the novelty judge? Oh, I'll be the novelty judge, yeah. <laughs> what are you looking for, Claude? A bit of fantasy, a bit of originality. Okay. Yeah, a bit of structure, composure. A bit of stiffness in the base. <laughs> oh, I think I know which cake you're going for. Uh, Jules, how about you? Um, I'm not sure which, which judge I am, but um, yeah, originality, definitely. And they're all so good, I don't know how we're going to do it. No, I, I know what you mean. Really? Are you well? And what are you looking for besides the bride? Um, a good looking cake. Oops! Sorry guys! Oh my god! Great idea sending the dyke on a diet to the cake bake off. Isn't that beautiful? It's a cake of soap. I love it. And it's fat free. How are Very you, Tom? fat free. I'm really good, thank you. Yes. How'd you come up with this? Well, every year I try and do something a little bit special. I've had my sponge cake, my beef cake, now, um, <laughs> now the cake to soap. Oh. Uh, yeah, it was just the inspiration came to me as I was having a shower this week. So. Uh, having a what? Shower. Sure. So, you know, Love it. I was in the bath. <laughs> Isn't this a beautiful and colourful cake? <laughs> this, is, this is Melinda Edwards' cake. Did you make this yourself? Um, no, I have to admit, I actually cheated on the uh, inside ingredients. Oh. But uh, you've got to remember, I've been away for the last couple of days at a conference, so it was done very quickly this morning. Oh, okay. And did you see this? Did you put the little police people on there too? Yes, most definitely. Um, and you'll notice... I tried to actually have a bit of gender equity through throughout the uh, marching police, but unfortunately yeah. not. The uh, the right uh, little men and women didn't arrive, but I did get one woman leading, being oh, Miss yeah. Nixon, of course. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, it, 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 I guess it, it's it's in relation to Miss Nixon's recent announcement of yep. allowing the police to march in uniform in Pride Excellent. March this year. <laughs> I'm 
I'm here with Molly and his beautiful Pride Awards cake. Well, and look, it, it, it doesn't uh, shine over all these brilliant cakes around here, but it's not even in the competition. I was just so blown out when I was given that award and I thought, yeah. what can I make as a cake? Because you have to make a cake when it's cake bake off. Yeah. And I thought, okay, let's do this, you know. So did you actually bake this one yourself? I or did. did you get a bit of help? No, no. I actually, a couple of my friends helped me. I mean, like, um, doing that toffee, yeah. to make that like glass, like this yeah is the biggest pain in the ass on earth I can tell you right oh, now oh you know? no I imagine it would have been you just sugar white vinegar and water but you have to look at it and you have to shake it if it's turning brown and oh he really Never does again. know what he's doing wow and um so is there any alcohol in the cake no that's in me Oh. <laughs> Damn. Okay, this is a cake that shows the size does indeed matter. Vic, this is um from the VAC, isn't it? Yeah, people living with HIV AIDS Victoria and Victorian AIDS Council Gay Men's Health Centre. Thank you. I tried to say that before, this didn't work. Now, what's the inspiration behind this particular cake? The inspiration, I suppose, it's all about safe sex. So it's uh, reminding people that um, when practicing sex, do it safely. Always wear a condom. I believe that this is actually a condom in there, is that right? Condom? It, that, that's a condom, yep. And now the question on everyone's lips, who actually models for this? Uh, I'd love to say my partner, but um, uh, who, who could it be? Oh, it could be uh, this guy at work, Guy Hussey. There you go. Oh, put your hands together, but didn't they do a great job? Uh, we did, didn't we? <laughs> That was really, really good. We'll have to send you on a more location shot. Uh -huh. <laughs> and, of course, go down to DT yeah. and support them because they help support the community, which is really, really wonderful. Mm. Troy, did you enjoy a cake this year? No, I didn't, actually. I thought I couldn't do a novelty or even do one that tasted good. I can't even let it cook toast. I prefer to oh, buy I them. I think they're quite lovely. Now, yeah. um, <laughs> do you know how much money was actually raised, Ames? Yep. Wow. They raised over $5,000 through That's cakes right. and That's through the auction. Yeah, very good. Fantastic effort. That's huge. And what yeah. was the yeah. most expensive cake? How well, I'm glad you asked that. Um, <laughs> the most expensive cake, it was the, the one with the dick. I'm surprised. It well, was the bus. The bus with the dick. And that went for 900 bucks. And that was a, uh, what was the word? Conglomerate. Syndicate. Syndicate of Mag Magnitude Jet Lounge and K-Bar. No, do, 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 do they taste them? Do they do like a taste section? No, well no. that was the thing. You're not allowed to taste it's... test them before oh, you buy them, so. Oh, where so, did they taste like Because who's going to buy one? What do you do with a cake once you paid $900 for it? You mean you better bloody enjoy it. You put it in the fridge for a few weeks, I imagine. Oh, that Seinfeld episode with Ellen. Um, yep. with, um, but yeah, there, was, there mm, were also lame. some other big raising cakes and uh, the big penis cake at the end from the VAC. That, that raised huge. $400. That was big. And um, Molly himself spent, oh, yeah. um, you know, $1,500 mm. on buying sick. cakes. So he's going to be putting on a... He's going to be putting on a bit of weight. <laughs> what was the $600 one, the coffee cake? He bought that for 600 bucks. Yeah, yeah. He, $600 in amongst that, he, he paid $600 for the most beautiful mud cake, thick mud cake with um, toffee, oh. lots of toffee and a picture of Marilyn on top. Did Lois love slut send one in? Lois no. love slut? No. Lois no. Love slut? Oh, Lois. no, there apparently there were complications. So was there anything that stood out to you two that maybe we didn't see maybe? on the footage that you thought were rather... The Sarah Marie cake was cute. Sarah Marie oh, really? cake? Sarah Marie cake, yeah. It was just this little... Kiggy doll with yeah, it's cute. Oh, yeah, that's that's great. Great. Okay, anyway, And now, please, eyes and ears, over to Selling News with the news desk. Selling News. <laughs> Thanks, Tabitha. In uh, good news, the transgender prisoner has been bailed um, after the alleged rape that occurred in Port Phillip Prison uh, last Thursday. Magistrate Brian Barrow um, recommended that the risk to the um, to, to the prisoner was greater than the risk of, um, of releasing her to the community. Defence lawyer Melinda Walker said that her client had been locked in a solitary cell for 23 hours a day and given a one hour and a six foot by four foot, that's 1.8 metre by 1.2 metre run, quote, similar to what you would see at the Lost Dogs home, end quote. The prisoner was also continually taunted by other prisoners in the unit and re had received letters from them after reports of who she was and why she had been put in maximum security had spread through the, the prison system. Speaking with GLBT community me media, M Melinda Walker said that uh, her client was grateful for the support received by the GLBT community and in fact had her self-esteem massively bolstered by it and was um, in fact now realising that there were other choices than some of the difficulties that had placed her in her situation previously. And in also lots of good news for the GLBT community, more of the legislation that um, came into effect after the Relationships Act was proclaimed on to the Thursday the 23rd of August 
and the only remaining two pieces are the Administration and Probate Act and some sections of the Property Law Act. Back to Tabitha at the central squealing position. And thank you, Sally. And of course, Sally's on the Joy um, FM News Desk 90.7 on your FM dial. And when that's not on, you've got a lovely Muslim station. So, <laughs> enjoy great. that. Seriously, it's really good. You, you'll probably get it together that one's not the right thing <laughs> and one is the right thing. We're going to have a short break now. Um, after the break, we've got some oh. sensational things coming up in the next segment. <laughs> <laughs> Johnny. Really we have over. got, yes, we've got information and we've got some history on Johnny from Big Brother. Incidentally, Prince William's going to have a bit of Big Brother when he moves yeah. into his new um, university because people are going to be wanting to know what he's doing at all times. And I actually wouldn't mind videoing that footage because a lot of people masturbate when they're at college. <laughs> well, that's the thing. Uh, I actually wouldn't mind watching Prince Willie pull himself, quite frankly. Um, also, there's other things going on. There's be a lot more talking. There'll be a lot more prettiness with me. Um, excuse me, pretty woman, and um, we'll be back with you soon. Okay, then thanks, bye. Oh, there we go. enjoying squeal like we are. Of course. Now for the weather. Now showers are expected to overnight tonight. How unusual. Mm -hmm. With a fresh southerly wind, which will be nice. And after an overnight low of 10 degrees, tomorrow we'll reach a high of about 14. Yeah, and Wednesday, a few more showers. Mm. Uh, minimum of 10 degrees, maximum of 14. Thursday, mainly fine. My God. Minimum of 8, maximum of 15. And Friday, mainly fine again. Nice. With a minimum of 7 and a maximum of 17. That's right. Now, coming up after Squeal is blah, blah, blah. And tonight, Ralph McLean and the panel talk about the role of the GLBTI community in the theatre. It's called Theatre Without Queers. And what a very boring place that would be. Mm, would be, wouldn't it? Mm. Then at 10.30 on Ben TV Profiles, Graham Stevens interviews Julian Hill, the Mayor of Port Phillip, about his life, his youth and his policies. Mm, I was actually there, actually there for that interview. It was a very good inter interview, so stick around for that. But um, in the meantime, stick around for some more Squeal. And of course, that was Winter Days. And we have to say a very happy birthday because it's really, really important. And he's right down here. It's come forward quickly, quickly, come, come to Mama. Michael. Yay! Quickly. Happy birthday, Michael! Get out of my It's um, Michael Plowy. Tell me now. It's his birthday <laughs> and he's listed in the phone books. If you're on a date, just ring him up. <laughs> or be down at Albert Park later. Hi, you gag and his mother's probably here, his brother or his wife or husband or something. <laughs> now, we've got a lot going on in this segment now. Yes. And someone who's read it is Peter. So oh, let's go to yeah. Peter. Well, firstly, we want to talk just uh, the opening of the back bar at the Peel. Oh, that was fantastic. <laughs> yeah. There's nothing better than an opening in the bar at the Peel, is there really? <laughs> How many times I've been finger... And, uh... <laughs> anyway, yes. But this particular opening was a big opening, and it was apparently very successful. Very, not much like Mandate, I've been told. Well, like, it's like a three-faced sunken dance floor and a bit of a Mandate sort of like sleazy sort of element, which I think we need here in Melbourne. There's not enough sleaze. I don't think so. I mean, no. yeah, not right. a lot of people want to do the eight dollars at the under the club eighty in the Porter Street. I don't know. Those where you pay your money and you got yeah, to do right. sexual things. Yeah. But um, some people just like you know the fun of the chase. Well, I think I do. I think I get no, I sort of lie. I just said that to fill in time. But um, also we still need to do it. No, the panic's very you good. Need dildos and things. So you'd probably need. <laughs> don't you? You'd need a place to really spread yourself <laughs> out, so you could lube yourself up properly. <laughs> I'm getting on, all embarrassed. about your sexually <laughs> right now. All right, let's I'm talk about Johnny. Because What's it's hot. Just, no, I'm <laughs> hot, not because I'm embarrassed. I don't do things like that. I'm a very chaste man. <laughs> now, we're also going to talk about John. Big Brother is oh, Big Sister. Oh, I'm Now, I don't know, when the Big Brother thing was happening, Johnny wasn't one of my favourites. 
No, no, it wasn't mate. because I didn't take into any of that public thing like I'm um, Johnny. I didn't care. Basically, he just bored me. I mm. think they needed to throw another gay person into the house to give it a bit of spark because I you've agree. got all those straight people in there. You're not going to have a confrontation. Well, I hope well, he's, he's got some be... of the nature and stuff, but because he was the only gay person, we don't want to say anything because it might be wrong. Exactly, but I agree. a couple of queens in, and then let's say even another girl or, or you know, two girl, two lesbians and two and four I so agree that. with that. So we, One's just boring. Just before we see the Johnny footage, this <clears> is from the National AIDS Bulletin in 1999, before he was a big man on Big Brother. He was doing Look at that. all these photos. Safe sex. Wow. Is on? Is he doing Safe porn? sex. Mm. No, safe sex. No, it was for a good cause. Now, we do need to explain that this footage, you see, we actually did an interview with him. We showed an interview with him sure. a few weeks ago. Amy did it? No. Yeah. Uh, no. no, Paul did. But, um, Paul Lane did it. Oh, oh yeah. we're <laughs> here today. We could thank a pair of you. Paul If you probably may have noticed that three minutes of it was cut out because we had a big implosion, apparently, at Channel 31. Things uh, happened. Power surge. Power, power surge. So we're going to show that three minutes. But we have to thank, and I'll oh. thank them afterwards. Yeah. So let's go to the footage. <laughs> Off we go. That's great. Now, have you had a chance to see any of the bits uh, from the show, like of yourself? Like, we know when we see ourselves on telly, we go, oh, my God, did I really say that? Did I look like that? Did you have that similar feeling when you saw yourself? Um, I haven't had a great deal of time to see a lot of the footage, but I got, I got to see my friends tape something for me, and I stuck the video player in, and one of the things I saw was me in the diary room, and Pete had just left, and I was crying. I had scars on my face. I and there, remember. And there I was, and I was looking at myself, and thinking, my lord, there are two million people watching me and I ain't looking real pretty. But at the same time, I was able to be vulnerable and I was able to be sort of um, just myself on TV. And at first that was kind of, well, that's, that's pretty full on. But then afterwards it was like, well, that's who I am. I have weaknesses and strengths just like anybody else. So it was okay. Only two million people. Uh, well, about yeah. that, yeah. yeah how, that was, how would that you, was just to my house. How would you feel about that? I don't think I would like that very much at no? all. No. You're wearing your bunny ears? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we'll get to we'll those. Get to we'll those. get to those. Um, now, how do you feel about everybody seeing your private part? on telly and like discussing it on the trams and then coffee having over a coffee and a cigarette going oh yes well did you see Johnny's Willy last night well how did you feel about seeing my private parts on the TV um, I was a bit indifferent because I sort of went well you know they were very lovely private parts don't <laughs> misunderstand me but like I, I just thought well you know big deal you know I, I for you was like not ogling for you uh, you, you, for me personally, you pretty much hit the nail on the head. For me, my body is no different to your body or anybody Well, else. I beg to differ, but uh, you know. <laughs> it's, it, it's just seeing a human body on TV, so for me, it's no really big deal. Now, you must have got really horny in the house. Oh, Lord. And oh. all those words like Blair and Gordon and all of that. Now, just hypothetically, if they were gay yeah. and you were single, would you be tempted to have sex with all the cameras going? Like, if it was all happening, you know, a few coronas or whatever, would you be tempted? You know, you're probably going to think I'm really, really, really boring, but no. I just, no? there are certain things for me personally that I consider private, and um, uh, sex or making love, whatever you want to call it, you know, hanging out, shagging, is just one of those things that, to me, is a, is a private thing that I don't think the whole of Australia needs to see. Well, I know damn well that I wouldn't be having sex with <laughs> camera. Um, now... Um, oh, oh, hang on, I've got like, all these look, I've got all these questions I've got to ask you, and I probably won't get through them all. This is not doing live, right? No, we're not doing live. What's You're your name again? Steve Anderson. 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 Yeah. yeah. Cool. Um, I've got a cooking show. Though, yeah, cool. you. If you get to tune in, you can tune in. I'm actually speaking to. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, we met like you know all of ten seconds exactly. before with this interview. Um, now, with your newfound fame, um, is that what this is? Fame? Yeah, you've got fame, you've got media attention. Yeah, it's good, huh? You've got media attention, you've got the whole country looking at you. What do you hope for personally, as well as for the community to come out of this? Okay, personally, I think that, um, okay, let's go with the community first. I think I kind of just touched on that a little bit first. If we're just able to push boundaries a little bit more and just make people out there realise that all in all we're really the same but we're different and just push those boundaries a little bit more, acceptance and tolerance, well then I feel that uh, indirectly I've achieved those things. Personally for me, um, all this media attention is just saying, hey, it's okay to be who you are, 
be proud of who you are and don't let anything stop you from being the person that you are. Don't let one, one aspect of who you are stop you from doing some things that you want to do in life. It's so cool and you're so cool and I know you're really tired and you want to party and I won't take up too much of your, more of your but, time. That's cool. But the 100,000 Bent TV viewers out there from the gay, lesbian, transgender... 100,000? Yeah, 100,000. Hello. Hello, Monday night. Uh, 100,000 of them out there would kill me if I didn't ask you this question. Can you get me an interview with Sarah Marie? No, I'm only joking. Can you're you, good enough. Oh, you want me to get you're you? You're good enough. How am I meant to feel about that? You know, Sarah Marie is a beautiful chick, and I think one of the great things to come out of the Big Brother house, uh, that certain people in the house um, sort of change perceptions, and I think Sarah Marie was great at that. She said to a lot of people in Australia, to a lot of women into Australia, that you know what? It doesn't matter if you're a size 6, it doesn't matter if you're a size 15, 16, whatever it might be. Just be comfortable, be happy with who you are, and the rest is just history, as well, they look, say. Well, look, halfway through, we were having bets that it was going to be you and Sarah Marie. And the shock ending, were you as shocked as what we were when Sarah Marie got voted out? I think that because when I came out of the house, the expectation was really there for Sarah Marie. And All I the said, bunny ears. Yeah, I mean, droves of bunny ears. The day of the trip, it's, I felt like we were being invaded by bunny ears. Um, I expected Sarah Marie to win, as I'm sure a lot of people did. So, yeah, I was surprised at the general outcome. Well, as I've heard you all say, it's not about the money. You all did a fantastic job, and I don't know how you stayed in there for three months. I'd like to thank you personally, Johnny Cass, and we'd like to thank you at Ben TV for having this interview with us. And thank you for your time. Thank you it's always much. It's always nice to be out there supporting the community. In fact, a community that supported me in very many ways as well. My so word. Here, here. Yay. Back to you in the, uh, back to you in the studio, Squealers. See ya. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Oh, thanks, Lois. That was just great. And Johnny actually still is talking in that <laughs> room. <laughs> Very nice. We've got to quickly thank Spira and Samantha from the Market Hotel, of course, and Brett Willis, most of all, because he helped arrange the whole thing, and John Wayne, of course. Now let's go over to Sally on the news desk. Thanks, Sally. Thanks, Tab. Just briefly to give the website for the International Lesbian and Gay Association mentioned earlier, that's www.ilga.org. That's pretty simple to remember. Some community announcements, things that are coming up. What, um, if you check out um, the, the Department of Health uh, in Victorian website, dhs.vic.gov.au forward slash phd forward slash strategy, you can find out about public consultation meetings for the Victorian Hepatitis C and Victorian HIV and AIDS strategies. And thanks to one of our very loyal uh, viewers, Graham, for sending that in. Um, don't forget the Gay and Lesbian Switchboard Tupperware Fundraiser, and that's on uh, Thursday, September the 6th at the Market Hotel, 7 p.m., and uh, for more, email call Paul on 98426863. And if you want to get in touch with Bent TV, it's really, really easy. You can uh, post office boxes at 1414 Collingwood 3066. Uh, phone us, if the phone is working yet, 94194745. Or um, email us on, um, on uh, switch to Bent TV. Um, and that's about it from the news desk. Thanks, Tab. Thank you, Sally. And of course, we've got a special competition. If you'd like to win a date with Sally, please send in all things, and we'll be signing off very, very soon. And you could win a lovely trip to Nusa Dua. Now, we're going to thank our squealers, <laughs> the lovely Peter on the end. Thanks for coming in, Peter. That's lovely Amy. 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 Yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, and lovely <laughs> Troy. So, please, we'll be back with you all next week. Until then. I'm just putting some glitter on you because you're a star. Oh, oh, beautiful. <laughs> you thought I was going to. I thought you were leaving me up, Sally. We're having me a trans lesbian sexual stuff going on. I don't mind that. Goodbye. <laughs> Bye. Oh. <laughs> <laughs>
Well, it's a beautiful cake, and no, just, uh, I hope you raise a bit of you. money. Thank you for all of this, you know. Excellent. Right? Thanks, Molly. I'm turning butch. <laughs> <laughs> this program is proudly brought to you by the Peel Dance Bar, corner of Peel and Wellington Streets, Collingwood. Oh, that was Squeal for another night. And just a word of thumb, if you're ever, if you're ever on there and it's being hosted by a drag queen, don't bring up sex. It just... No, you end up on the receiving end of it, sort of... So well, that's right. <laughs> um, so what's coming up next, Britt? And next we have Blah Blah Blah. That's and right. Ralph McLean and the panel are discussing the role of the GLBTI community in the theatre, which that's is right. theatre without queers. Imagine that. It'd be kind of weird. It, it would be very small. That's true, wouldn't it? There, there wouldn't be many people left, I no, don't think. No, none at all. So tune in and watch this show, because you'll just see just how important we are to the theatre life in general. Yes. Off you go. Bye.